What's up, adventures? Got a new basic build for you today. The Art Lab Design Studios Hex Base or Radar Table from Cotswold Collectibles. So you guys are all familiar with the cryo tank I built. And uh, I got with Randall. Uh, Randall gave me some pointers on building these paper models. Um, we went back and forth. And uh, we talked about all the paper models and the pros and cons. And Randall's posted some really good tutorial videos as well. I'll put a link to in the description. But today, we're going to build this uh, table. I'm really excited to add this to my collection. Um, like I said, I'm going to build a modular G.I. Joe base at some point. I'm in the process of designing that. But in the meantime, I've been buying up these uh, paper models. And today, we're going to be doing this hex base build. So... We're going to go ahead, pause the video, come back, and talk about how we're going to attack this thing. Okay, guys, welcome back. So, check out who has a fancy cutting board now. This guy. This is the hex base uh, radar table. As you can see, here is the concept picture of it that Randall's created. Now, uh, here's all the components. We've got the light-up portion here for the interior. It lights up the the actual base and then we've got a couple um, of course here's the light up portions they're uh, translucent so uh, the light will shine through these are almost like a mile on like a mylar style type of paper if you're familiar with that material which I am from my early days of being a civil engineer and um, we've got all the pieces here of the radar table similar to what we had with the cryo tank um, which is really, really cool. Showcase the other piece here. <clears throat> so yeah, pretty neat. Um, I'm imagining that this didn't come with a direction sheet. Oh, yes it did, I'm sorry, I apologize. The directions are on the back of that sheet there, so there we go. I didn't do my research first, apparently. So yes, awesome. Randall always has great directions with his uh, with his paper projects, which definitely you need because these are, like I said, these aren't for just a, a novice. So when I was discussing some of this with Randall, he just suggested using this E600 glue, which I coincidentally had some because I used it on a... Uh, one of my Yeti projects I made. I use this to glue the fur onto the body. So I do have that kind of glue, which Randall suggests. And Randall also suggests going ahead and cutting out basically all the shapes first and then going back and find cut or, and then scoring them, you know. Um, you can uh, check some of Randall's workout on his YouTube channel. I'll post a link to that. But uh, Randall definitely suggests going ahead and taking a just pair of scissors and cutting these all out and then scoring um you know he says just cut them with scissors so i know i didn't do that last time i used a razor knife uh which he said now nah, you don't need to do that so um what i'll probably do here is i'll look the directions over and i'll go ahead and get a lot of these cut out and we'll uh we'll start scoring this thing and getting it put together so stay tuned
All right, guys, welcome back. So definitely read through all the directions because Randall has laid out how to score all this. So we've rough cut everything out, and he suggests scoring everything prior to cutting out the final shapes. And on one of these pieces, you have to really read carefully. There is a note. I believe it's not on this one. Let me find it. I just was looking at it. Ah, reverse score the inside dotted lines on this piece. So you need to really look at all these notes and make sure that you know what you're doing prior to this. Now the rest of these, I don't see anywhere where we'll have to reverse score. So when he says reverse score, you score it on the, in, the, the back part of this. So we can go ahead and score these parts and then score this after you get it cut out. So that's what I would suggest doing. I hope Randall agrees with me on that. So what we'll do is we'll do kind of an example for one of these smaller pieces. So you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about here. So we'll do one of these uh, little portions here. So you can see here, I'll grab my razor knife. You've got these little dotted lines here. So you'll score those. Don't cut all the way through, just score them. So basically a light cut. It's important to have a nice, sharp uh, <clears throat> razor knife and also a metal straight edge. That's what I would suggest. I think Randall suggests that as well. So we just come down here, kind of line it up the best you can and just give it a light score. So we've scored that portion. Let's score this portion as well. Cool. So then we'll come through. We'll do our final cut. So I have extremely steady hands. And I'm not joking. I do have really steady hands. Um, if I wasn't dumb, I probably could have been a doctor <laughs> or a surgeon. But I'm dumb, so I don't think I'd ever make it in that field. It's hard being dumb sometimes. My four-year-old's smarter than me. Okay. Sorry this video is a little slow and cumbersome, but just trying to cut all this out and not screw it up. Then we've got this small portion here we've got to cut off. So we got this thing cut out. And then, you know, I would suggest on the score lines to kind of... Bend them up a little bit, like so, if you've scored them correctly. And you can see here, there you go. Now, Randall doesn't talk about doing this, but I've done this on a few of these. Well, I guess one, I've done my crowd tank build. Well, let me grab something give you guys an option if you would like to use it let me find so when you score these you're going to get a slight paper you know paper showing through it's it's almost negligible to detect it but what your guy can do is if you really are bothered by it you can come through and take a sharpie and just kind of blacken those if you wanted to uh, that's up to you i do it on certain parts if they if i feel like they're going to show um because i'm kind of a weirdo perfectionist um so there you go that's kind of how you do these so like randall says just go through and score all your pieces first and then uh hey buddy 
and then we can um, and then we can go ahead and start putting these together. So we'll go ahead and get them all scored up and put together. We got a helper here right now. It is Ollie the Colombian Firebird. This is Ollie's Serapi that his Uncle Matt got him in Colombia. So uh, say hey, bud. Hi. All right. So anyways. We'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll get all these cut out and scored and then we'll come back and take a look at them all. Hopefully you guys don't all get sick from that. Hi, right, welcome back guys. So I forgot to mention one more thing here as I was going through all these. So there's these areas in here. This is the one we just cut out where it says cut this area out for lighting effects. Whoops. So the uh, mylar or vellum sheet that Laredo has given us with the graphics on them are going to be glued behind these. So you need to cut these out, and I would suggest using a really sharp razor knife and a straight edge and doing your best not to uh, damage the outer area here and just try to cut it out to the best of your abilities. So there's a few of these on here. Uh, of course, this is the clone to the one I just cut out. Uh, same deal here. Uh, you've got on the radar table sides, you've got those where the red uh, arrows are. You can see we're going to cut all those out. So... Um, as an addendum to what I just said earlier, I would go ahead and cut those out first. I would score everything, then cut those out, then final cut the rest of your uh, model out. That's what I would do. So I would score your lines, cut this part out, then final cut everything, if that makes sense to you guys. So that's what I'm going to do. So stay tuned. We'll come back and hopefully have all these cut out. All right, guys, so I've cut one of these out pretty easy with a razor knife. Now, this is where that marker trick I told you is going to come in handy. So you'll just take a black Sharpie and you'll just kind of black those edges there a little bit on the inside. Be careful not to get on the outside of your model. But what you'll do with that is when your graphics... Are on the outside or inside of this it'll hide any of that white line so you just take a little bit of time take a black marker a fine tip sharpie and uh, kind of hide those white uh, cut marks that's what I suggest doing but you guys do you I'll do me all right guys welcome back so as you can see I've got just about everything cut out um, I've got a few areas like this in here where I still have some fine cutting to do on the uh, tabs there, but we'll do that as we assemble this table. I've also yet to go through and and black out my white lines on the inner portions that I cut out for the graphics, but I'll do that as well here in a bit. So everything's ready to go. Now, one thing I want to make note for you guys who are um, building one of these, Randall has these other portions here. Uh, save these, do not throw those away, cut these out. And uh, we'll use these later on. Like you saw in the crowd tank, they're kind of like, I would, I, they're almost like 3D pop-outs in a way. So you definitely want to save these and we're going to use these at some point on this. I think uh, what I will do, if I can find it, I have some of this uh, 3D automotive tape, 3M, I had for body, uh, body parts, or not body, yeah, body parts on a truck I had to reattach, so on my old Land Cruiser before I got rid of it. So we'll use this maybe to attach these pop-outs. At least that's the plan. You can also use two-sided tape or glue them. I don't, it really doesn't matter what you do. However you want to do it, you do you. So that's the next step to, um, to do on this. I need to go through and <clears throat> darken in the in, inner portions of this. Now, you, again, you don't have to do that. Um, it's something I'm going to do just because that's just the type of person I am. So I'm going to do that. And then we're going to probably come back after I do that. And eh, we'll, let's just talk about it now. So there's these graphics here. This is on vellum. It's a real, uh, it's almost like a transparent, translucent paper. Not really transparent, translucent paper. So these are the graphics that go and attach to those areas that uh, Randall has designated to be cut out. So... We'll glue those on prior to putting this together. Uh, we'll just cut these out with a pair of scissors. Now be careful, this stuff's tough, but it's not that tough. Um, I've used vellum on uh, a lot of uh, old construction plans 
that I used to make back before we went completely uh, computer. So uh, this would be hard to reproduce. Anyways, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to blacken in those areas, we're going to cut these out, and when I come back, we'll try to have all these graphics put in here, and then we can start talking about assembling this thing uh, and making this hex base look like an actual hex base. So uh, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, guys, welcome back. So we've began the portion of placing the vellum screens on the model. So I was looking for some uh, scotch tape, but uh, apparently we don't have any scotch tape right now, but I did have some uh, double-sided tape, which works out great. So what I did was I just took the double-sided tape, put it around the opening, and then press the uh, vellum portions, sorry, excuse me, vellum portions onto it, then covered it with some uh, masking tape that I sliced in. It's really irrelevant, to be honest with you, because um, you just don't see it. It's all hidden, so it doesn't matter really how you do it. That's how I decided to do it. Um, but something you need to be aware of. So definitely know that orientation matters, right? So this portion here is going to sit up top like that. So you need to make sure when you're doing this that you get your pictures placed correctly in the right uh, orientation. So don't put them on upside down. I started off doing the first one then I realized I was putting it on upside down. So that's where we're at. Um, now we're just a matter of uh, gluing the portions together and uh, basically starting to uh, assemble this uh, top portion. So that's what we're doing first is the top portion of the radar table or the hex table. And uh, we'll go ahead and start kind of gluing this together and we'll come back and hopefully have a completed model. So stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So we are on to the next step. We've got this uh, top part completed. Went really well. A um, couple things of note, the inner portion of the radar table, definitely assemble that first and attach it to the uh, to the portion that it's supposed to be attached to. Again, orientation, guys. I mean, orientation is super important. Look through your model, understand how it all goes together before you start gluing. Um, sometimes guys might get ahead of themselves and assemble this portion before this piece goes in and then they're kind of screwed. So you definitely have to look and see um, and, and check out the orientation and follow that orientation. It's very important that you take your time on these models. They're really easy to follow, but you've got to take your time. So the next step is obviously the, uh, the base here. We're working on that right now. Um, I'm getting all the pieces figured out for it. And then the, the, the next portion after that will be these small, I guess they're called, um, I'm not sure what these things are called, control panels or light-up panels. So the thing about these are, as with the portions here, you have these little white squares. You cut those out like so. Already done one here for you. And then Randall's included this colored vellum paper. And then you can just cut out as needed. And uh, I've got one cut out here. And then these will be placed behind your uh, areas here that have been cut out. So when the LED light, let me get you, when the LED light turns on, you'll have light up effects. So it's random, you can pick whatever color you want. If you don't want to go with the vellum, I'm sure you can find some, um, let me grab some here, excuse me. You can find some light up uh, transparent cue card paper like I used on a previous custom, or you can do whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna go with what Randall gave me because Randall knows best and uh, he's made a ton of these. So. And I really like that stuff. Um, so we'll get those finished. And then we'll get the base going. And then I think we can 
These are going to take some time actually to do. I mean, I've got one actually done right here. You can see I had to tape it on the back because I'm out of scotch tape. But uh, it'll all work out when it's all done. Um, sometimes you just got to make do with what you got. And uh, that's the next step. We'll get these all cut out, colored paper behind them. We'll get the base put together, and then, then we'll marry the base to the top. So we'll be going through these steps as I go through the video, so stay tuned. All right, adventurers, welcome back. So we're finished with the base. Turned out really good. Uh, little blemishes when I was darkening it with the black marker. I kind of messed up a couple times, but that's okay. Uh, it's my base, so I don't really care. Sometimes you, sometimes you have little accidents, happy accidents. I think that's what Bob Rouse called them. <laughs> so... Uh, it looks great though. You don't have to use the black marker to cover in the white lines. I just like to do that and sometimes it bites me in the butt. But that's okay. I got the top and the base uh, ready to go. Uh, so we'll, the next step will be to bury those two together. Um, and then also finish this small little control mechanism. Whoop. Let me see. Oh, boy. Uh. The small little control mechanism, I think Randall calls that. Uh, let's see, he had a name for it. I can't remember. It's some kind of control mechanism, but it's cool. It's this little uh, personal computer here. So the next step is to marry these two pieces together. So we'll get those glued on and we'll come back and we'll have a few final, final thoughts on this uh, hex table build. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so here is the completed art lab hex or radar table in its full glory what a great build this turned out great didn't have any problems um of course there's this cool tea light that you put in the bottom uh, that lights up the table we'll demonstrate that here in a second i've got a friend to help me do that and uh yeah this is great it's a really cool thing i think this is a a great jumping off point for anybody who wants to get into building the paper models. What I would suggest doing is getting on Randall's Facebook page, I think, either his or his Art Lab page, and he has some free downloadables. Um, he had them a long time ago, and I downloaded them. I'm guessing he still has them on there. But I would grab those and build those as a practice before I jumped into any of these. Uh, this is a pretty moderately easy uh, build especially compared to the cryo tank. But uh, it's really it's really pretty easy to do if you take your time, follow directions, and again, understand orientation and how things go together. So I really enjoyed doing this. I did it in about a weekend, uh, off and on, on my spare time. And uh, it turned out great. And I can't wait to use this in an upcoming photo story. So guys, Definitely check out Art Lab through Cotswold. Follow Randall on Facebook, uh, his Art Lab page on there. He has a website. I'll link to all these in the uh, description below. And let me know what you think of this build. If you've built the hex table, if you're planning on building a hex table or other paper models. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe to the page. Definitely like the videos because it helps my uh, algorithm out quite a bit. And in the meantime, guys, keep living the adventure. And cheers.